Welcome back to the Redstone series. Today, we are going to be talking about the lightning rod. We can use this lightning rod to convert the power of electricity from the sky into a redstone signal. Let's do this. You craft a lightning rod with three copper ingots. When you place down a lightning rod, the little stick at the bottom will always be attached to the block you place it on. If I place a lightning rod on the side of this lightning rod, it'll have the stick pointing into the lightning rod. Lightning rods don't need to be supported. There's no blocks under them, they just float. Already, this can be pretty useful for some really nice build hacks, but decoration isn't all they're used for. This the lightning rod attracts lightning. You'll need to wait for a thunderstorm in order for the lightning rod to do anything. When the thunderstorm rolls around and lightning has a chance to strike, it does. Wow, that was really good timing. Any lightning within 128 blocks in Java Edition or in Bedrock Edition, it's only 64 blocks. Any lightning within that radius will be redirected from where it was going to go right into the lightning rod. Oh, oh, that keeps scaring me. When the lightning rod has been hit by lightning, it puts out a brief redstone signal of 15. Oh. What is this timing? If you don't want to wait for lightning to strike, you can also throw a channeling enchanted trident at it to manually strike the lightning rod. It also strongly powers the block that it is attached to, so when it gets struck, redstone behind that block will also be powered. Now the lightning rod doesn't have too many uses, briefly activating redstone when struck by lightning. Oh, in mob farms, the lightning rod can be very useful. You see different mobs like creepers, villagers, and pigs, and mushrooms do different things when struck by lightning. Here I've got a lightning rod. Right next to the lightning rod is a pit with a bunch of creepers in them. These four trapdoors here are attached to some redstone blocks so they are always open. The reason for this, if we're in survival mode and the creeper's coming at us, it walks right through the trapdoor, thinking it's a normal block, but it ends up falling right through into the pit of creepers. Right here, we've got a lightning rod, right in the perfect spot where if lightning strikes, it'll zap all these creepers and they'll become charged creepers. And then right next to the lightning rod, we have a carpet, and this carpet underneath there's a few little redstone particles. This is being created from a redstone torch here, which is powering the redstone, which on both sides goes off to another redstone torch, which then depowers the redstone. Then we've got a whole system here where the redstone feeds into the repeaters, opening the trapdoors, and a small pulse extender here, which keeps the trapdoors open long enough for all of the creepers to fall out. Where do they fall? Well, into this pit of mobs, of course. When we go in and ignite the charged creeper and blow them up, all of these mobs will go away and we'll be left with a bunch of mob heads. Anyway, now we wait for a thunderstorm and once we've got ourselves a thunderstorm and we got all these creepers in here, we go in, it goes zap, all these creepers are charged, they go down the pit, now we've got a whole bunch of charged creepers in the pit with our guys. That, so we'll light one of the creepers there. Boom! They all explode except for maybe like two, a whole bunch of drops, and some mob heads. And that's how to use the lightning rod in your redstone builds. For more videos in the redstone series, check out this video right here. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any amazing, cool stuff like this one. That's it from me, and I shall see you in the next one.